So I think we're ready to go. Can you hear me, Patrick? Yep, everything's fine. Great. Thank you. Great. So welcome all here um, to the session Genomics in Fire by Patrick Werner. Uh, Patrick is the co-chair of the um, Genomics IG, and I think he can introduce himself quickly. So yeah. wish you all a nice talk. Thank you, Gustav, for the nice introduction. Uh, let me share first, share my screen really quick. And now you should be able to see my screen. Yes. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the genomics or fire and genomics, genomics and fire talk. Um, I'm happy that you joined. Um, I'm honored to be invited again to the dev days. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I would want to start about uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Patrick Werner, as Gustav just introduced myself. I'm working at the Mollet Institute in Heilbronn, um, being responsible for processes and interoperability uh, in precision medici medicine, uh, especially in genomics uh, and oncology. Uh, I recently also became the CEO of Echinos UG, which is a, an advisory or consulting company about fire in Germany. So my working Main topics are fire and, as I just said, BPNM, so process modeling and automatization, because uh, you need to have an, a good understanding about clinical processes before trying to integrate interoperability into it. Um, I also have several fire hobbies listed here. Um, so I'm uh, one of the co chairs of the Clinical Genomics International Work Group. Uh, I'm working uh, on the German base profiles with the Technical Committee of Fire Germany and on Harpy, Java, uh, all the libraries where I can get some time and I find some bugs, I will try to fix them. So today we want to focus on the, the genomic part of FHIR. Um, we want to have a look at the FHIR genomics motivation and significance, at some tooling around FHIR genomics. Uh, we will have a look about, on the genomics reporting IG structure, so um, implementation guide, which profiles are contained inside of this implementation guide and um, how do they look like? So examples, how does a variant, for example, uh, in FHIR looks like? Um, then we will have used a look um, about tools uh, using the clinical genomic IG or implementing it and have a short review and closer. The FHIR genomics group, um, is motivated by several things. Um, we want to modernize genomic lab reports, uh, therefore enable modern big data approaches and enable clinical decision support and case-based reasoning in everyday clinical care. So we want to also facilitate the downstream research and reanalysis, which is uh, next to the everyday care. This is downstream analysis to get a deeper understanding of cancer or other diseases. Um, yeah, this is a short glimpse on how fire genomics looks. So we, in general, we have the diagnostic report encapsulating all the observations. We have a patient and practitioner who did uh, the, the lab uh, analysis. We have the specimen, the tumor, for example, and then we have some observations about the variants themselves, like here right to the right. Um, so we will have a deeper look at this later. A variant is a profiled observation in the genomics IG, and therefore we're walk, walk, uh, working a lot with components. Um, so I enter, uh, inserted two here. The first one is the gene studied ID. So here we can see this variant is about the gene re one a and we have a coded DNA change in CHGS coded, uh, which is a deletion uh, on C. And the uh, variant observation is also accompanied by other observations. For example, the tumor mutational burden, the microsatellite instability, which are also very important or getting more and more important for treatment in oncology uh, space. Um, and the observation variant, oh, uh, that's doubled. Yeah, that's, that's to the right. 
The current situation in genomics most of the time is PDFs, sometimes even faxed PDFs. Um, oftentimes, they are, these PDFs are printed, then signed by the responsible practitioner in the hospital, then scanned again, uh, faxed or emailed to the hospital. Uh, then the central document facility in the hospital will print it out again, scan it in again. Some physicians have to sign it. Therefore, it's printed out again and scanned back again, and the quality gets horrible over time. And the, 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 the worst uh, problem, it's not machine readable. We also ha don't have standardized uh, the, the transportation of lab results, apart from PDF uh, in between labs or labs and hospitals. And it can also require a lot of expert knowledge to read. Of course, FHIR won't get rid of expert knowledge, but um, the, the genomics implementation guides and the tooling we develop at the Mollet Institute are aiming to support the physician having the expert knowledge already or getting faster access onto the expert knowledge. So the solution to this is structured data, a FHIR-based genomic report. But first, let's have a look at the precision medicine. So precision medicine is a quite new approach uh, for, pre, for treatment and prevention, um, considering the genomic or the genome of uh, the individual of every patient, because there's quite a difference in our, geno in our genome from patient A to patient B, and therefore we can't treat everyone the same in certain diseases. Um, molecular tumor boards, are facing this issue. They are not looking on what cancer, is this, is this a brain cancer or is this a liver cancer? No, they're focusing on what uh, variants are causing this cancer. And this creates a huge workload because a lot of data comes in. These PDFs are usually four to five pages long, sometimes even longer. And this workload on physicians and geneticists uh, due to the overwhelming amount of data is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. So the hospital we are working with, they're estimating for a single patient, they have a preparation time in between 20 and 30 minutes for the virtual tumor board. And that's uh, some time we want to reduce to give this time back to the uh, practitioners to treat the patients. We also want to um, enable point of care apps for precision medicine. So for example, uh, we have a genomics lab here, getting the service request from a hospital. This will get sent back in the genomic data, in the genomic IG format in FHIR to the EMR. And then you can have some point of care or special uh, interest apps to provide some extra um, benefits out of this data. For example, you can have uh, some navigators um, showing you some insights about the variants that were ident identified or some statistic statistics about uh, the percentage of patients who are having the same variants and their outcomes, preferably. Um, it also enables the preparation of virtual tumor boards, as, as I just said. Um, so our use, uh, use case or process is manual started, so still, the, the request to our lab we are working with is triggered manually um, and there's some paper involved mostly due to German regulatory reasons. But once in the lab, all the information is digital available anyways. It was available in a TSV, like a tab separated value format before. And uh, we first created a, a, a facade for this transforming the CSV files into the FHIR IG format. And then we can use it directly in the virtual tumor board, which looks something like this when people are chatting and looking at pictures or something like this if they have a look at the variants of a single patient. For the FHIR genomic tools, I provided some links here. You can have a look at our conference page of the uh, genomic work group. Um, feel free to join us on uh, Sulip if you are interested in genomics and fire. We are always uh, happy to uh, have new participants in the discussions in our work group. Even if you don't have time for the work group, maybe just join for the stream. Um, we have our own list on the HL7 listserv um, and several um, materials uh, we already created. So there's the domain analysis uh, model, which was uh, developed 2018. 
Um, and the currently most important resource, the implementation guide, the genomics reporting implementation guide, which, which is still a draft. It's uh, STU1 right now. We already balloted it once and we are now um, work, worked on um, implementing all the feedback into it. And we will have the second ballot round uh, proposably in the January Bay, uh, ballot cycle. Um, yeah, where to find it? Uh, I, pro I uh, put in the link here. Uh, you can Google for fire, fire genomics reporting. You sh probably should end up here, but that's not 100%, of course. Um, you can have a look in the fire registry for the IG guides. Um, and we are also linked through the R4 genomics page, which you shouldn't use. And on the core page about genomics, there's a big disclaimer about please don't use these resources. These are outdated. Uh, if you want to work with genomics and fire, please go directly to our implementation guide. Um, in R5, this uh, HL7.org slash fire genomics part will be written, rewritten completely and mostly just pointing to our implementation guide. Our uh, implementation guide covers all aspects of human genetic reporting. It's including the representation of known variants, uh, mostly using terminologies, uh, as well as fully describing the Nova variant. So there, there's the possibility to um, describe a variant by an ID or by providing the HTVS an, uh, annotation. So you feel uh, you are free to use it in your preferred way. And we can provide with the ID relevance of identified uh, variants um, from the perspective of disease pathology, pharmacogenomics, uh, transplant suitability. So one huge use case of our implementation guide is the National uh, Bone Marrow Donor Program in the USA, uh, which are doing the HLA typing uh, with the fire implementation guide. And you also could use this for full and partial DNA, DNA sequencing, including whole genome, whole exome studies. Um, it depends how you put together the resources we provide in the implementation guide. Um, but it's mainly focused on data structures for uh, reports for genomic test results. Um, the implementation guide is, has an international scope. Uh, it maximizes the use of the clinical resources observation diagnostic report. This was uh, an informed decision. We wanted to use observation because many uh, hospital information systems um, uh, if they support fire, then they will start with, with the low hanging fruits like observation, patients, etc. cetera. Uh, therefore we have profiles and observations and not uh, special uh, resources for genomics uh, apart from a molecular sequence, which is by the way, undergoing some rework in the near future. So um, if you want to report just plain variants, go with the variant profile, please. We try to avoid pre-coordination of the type of the variants, we try to avoid preconating too much information into the coding system, such as slowing, so you can uh, put together the, the different uh, building blocks of the IG as you wish. Um, we are allowing for variability in the amount of discrete information which is captured, whether it's just transporting IDs of known variants or new variants or some context like implications on the variant, it's up to the implementer, it's up to you. Um, we use separate observations for each independently useful assertion, which is up to debate sometimes. Uh, so for example, if you look at our variant profile, it's quite long. So this could be uh, split up into different ob observations. Maybe in the future, we are currently doing an information model um, alongside with the implementation guide. Um, to discover the best uh, um, granularity of this information. Um, but by using separate observations, we're achieving the maximum uh, discoverability and queryability of our data. So you can just put it on your fire server and then query for the implications and the variant and all this stuff independently. And where, where it was possible, we also uh, aligned ourselves with the version two genetic variation model implementation guide and the version two cytogenetic model implementation guide to uh, foster interoperability in between standards as well. So if you look at the implementation guide, this is the start page. 
Uh, you have the table of contents, which is a great start, a starting point. So you can have some reading about genomic background, how to do genomic reporting, how do I do variant reporting. We try to uh, add some text there to, to get you started, to give you an impression on how to use this implementation guide. The genomic report itself is a diagnostic report and all the results, as I just said, are observations. So the genomic report has the category genetics uh, code, that's the line code. Um, we have some extensions for related artifacts, uh, which are um, providing additional knowledge about the report, like uh, literature links or other additional knowledge you want to represent. You can add media attachments, um, for example, for the original PDF form of the um, of the report, you can reference sub-reports, so you can nest different diagnostic reports and their overall uh, genomic interpretation inside of each other to give some meaningful uh, uh, me uh, to give some meaning for the different levels of the reporting and um, apart from the variant, we also have some other observations which are profiled, which are important. For example, the studied region, which genes or positions on the genome where I was looking at. Um, this is currently undergoing, uh, uh, no, we are currently having discussions uh, about region studied, whether it was uh, intended to represent what I was trying to look at, what I was planned, uh, to look at or what I actually achieved to look at. So these are not, these questions are not solved 100% yet. Um, so feel free to join our discussion. We are always happy to, to, to get more knowledgeable people. Um, we also have the findings, um, which is this, it's an abstract uh, profile. So the variant, for example, haplotype genotype is deriving from the genomic finding. We also have um, some possibilities to transport implications like medication efficacy, pathogenicity, and other stuff. We have this overall genomic interpretation where you can put in the, the big picture. This diagnostic report tells me that. Um, and we have the, the grouper, the genomic grouper, which uh, was introduced to be able to group together several observations into uh, distinct groups, which, of course, uh, sorry, also could be achieved by genomics reports, which are layered into each other. So um, there are several possibilities achieving the same result with the IG currently. To all of you who joined this talk last year, uh, I presented this overall uh, representation of the genomics reporting IG last year. Um, this is gone and replaced by this much simpler, um, especially in the implications field. And the old implications um, were collected by asking uh, people, what do you, what is important in your use case? So we have the pharmacogenomics, the germline, the somatic, but in the end we discovered that all of this uh, could be merged together into a diagnostic and a therapeutic implication for now. And also the pharmacogenomics uses these implications, adding some medication standing, uh, medication statements and some medication usage uh, implication, which is a, a, a task resource. And here you can see the report, overall interpretation, region studied. We just talked about this. Um, these findings can have members or the genomic report has members. Um, like the variant, the genotype, haplotype, and a sequence phase relation like cis-trans in between different uh, variants of genotypes, uh, haplotypes. The genomics report res result references are also a very important topic for the genomic implementation guide. Um, we have reference options for different meanings. We have the HAS member, which is used in the grouper profile um, to say this grouper includes these five variants. And more importantly, we're using uh, the derived from relationship in between observations for findings which are deriving from other findings. 
So for example, the um, overall genomic interpretation is derived from zero to many variants or haplotypes. And um, this is very useful because then you can have several uh, interpretations pointing to several uh, groups of variants or haplotypes. We also have other resources for the implementation guide. We have the request for the genetic test, the service request. Um, we have the specimen, so what was analyzed in the lab. We have the patient, which is not um, especially profiled. It's, it's just the patient, but it's important to know which patient the tumor belongs to in the, the, the results. And we have, of course, the organization, the practitioner as the performer of the report um, or the requester uh, for the recommended action, which is like proposal um, from geneticists having a look at the variants and then um, proposing several tasks for the treatment of the patient like medication or yeah, mostly medication. We also have some supporting information in the IG, uh, which is important to do a proper interpretation of the data in the lab. So for example, we have the family member history. So you get some idea about uh, prevalence in the family. Um, we have some uh, risk assessment uh, uh, information, uh, document references for other uh, on oncologic uh, 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 or pathologic uh, uh, reports. Um, and we can point, of course, to other clinical observations um, because we can point to every observation. So these could also be non-genomic observations like pathologies, uh, 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 staining results like fish. So coming to the most important type uh, uh, part, the findings. Genomic finding, we already had a look at the genomic finding. The genomic finding uh, is an abstract profile, so can't be instantiated directly. Um, but we have three different uh, uh, children, pro uh, the, yeah, deriving profiles from the genomic finding, the variant, the haplotype, and the genotype. And uh, the genotype can be derived from a variant or from the haplotype. So you can see the derived from is a very important relationship in genomics because you're making assumptions deriving from other informations. And here in the sequence phase relationship, you can see a possible mixture in between the observation variant profile and the molecular sequence resource because the sequence phase relationship could derive from a molecular sequence on the one side and derive from a variant on the other side. Um, we also provided you with the line codes here. So if you're wondering what are these numbers, these are the line codes for the codes of this uh, observation of these profiled observation uh, instances. Yeah, the finding as an abstract profile has some information which is reused in all uh, uh, deriving profiles. For example, the gene studied, which gene was studied, for example, BRCA2 or uh, EHR, um, uh, HER. <laughs> um, we have a component for cytogenetic location. So where was the location? What, which chromosome was the variant, for example? And what was uh, the reference sequence as assembly which was used uh, for the genomic pipeline in the lab. We are using a lot of codable concept codings, uh, so coded information to enable machine learning, to enable AI, to enable big data approaches, CDS works, all of this needs structured data and therefore we are preferring codable concepts and codings and terminology at every position we can. We sometimes have a fallback in text if necessary, so uh, the A, C, add, snip, RS, something, you could do that. It's right now, it's not forbidden by our profiles. We don't encourage people to do it like this because this is not much better than sending the PDF. You could uh, code uh, similar things with uh, value codable concepts using GL string for HLA data, for example, farm var uh, for, for PGX stuff. Uh, and you could use um, 
for, for simple SNP stuff, you could just use HGVS or a coded representation of the SNP, like this number, it's a suitable system. Multiple codings are always okay. Um, we never restricted coding to one, um, as long as you provide the required codings, uh, you're free to add as many other alternative codings as you like. So this is the variant. The variant uh, has a lot of components, as I just said. Um, we are not 100% sure if we want to split this up in the future, but for now it is, it is like it is. Um, and this is heavily inspired from VCF files in some parts. Um, we are having the allelic frequency, allelic read depth, uh, allelic state. Um, we have the PHGVS, so the change in the amino acid, which um, where's the here we have the which is derived uh, from the uh, coded HGVS, the DNA change. You can have C and G HGVS if you like to. We have uh, change types for amino acid and DNA change, chromosome copy number change types, um, the coordinate system copy numbers, alt allele, ref allele inner outer starts. So all this uh, start and ref all, this is very VCF inspired. Um, and we have um, the method down here um, to transport the exact method um, of the analysis, which is not one, not that easy in genomics um, because most of the time a single code won't represent the whole pipeline. So therefore you, we are currently also experiencing how to represent the whole pipeline. Could it be a device, um, something like that. So if I have a variant and um, I want to, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I, that's an old slide. No, we are coming to the implication. So I have the variant here looking like this, having, for example, uh, the HGVS string here or some ID string, could be dbsnip, could be clinvar. And then I want to uh, transport the implication which are coming from this variant or multiple variants. Therefore, we have a genomic implication based profile, abstract profile with an extension for related artifacts again, and some prognosis and evidence uh, level um, components, which are also included here because these are deriving. So we have now having a diagnostic and a therapeutic implication profile. So the diagnostic, you can see the associated phenotype, the associated cancer. So if I find these variants, the associated cancer should be this, uh, the mode of inheritance, um, so if it was uh, inherited by uh, my uh, parents, for example, and the clinical significance. And we also have the ther therapeutic implication, which is more about, um, I have this cancer or phenotype. Um, we assess different medications to treat these variants. Uh, and um, we probably have uh, some efficacy scores or in the worst case, some high risks. So this is, um, I'm always looking at this through my oncology genomic uh, glasses, but for PGX, of course, you have high risk uh, medications uh, outside of oncology for certain patients. And all this is transported through the therapeutic implication. We currently have a SEU note uh, at the implication chapter. Um, I showed you, we, changed a lot in the implication fields because it was too fine granular. We now only ended up with having these two. Um, evalu evaluating these, we want to put, to put these into the next ballot and then see the feedback uh, and starting with the feedback in getting more precise uh, implication profiles or, or not. We, we, it depends on the feedback we are getting from the implementer. Yeah, PGX implications because we under, underwent this refactoring. It get, is, is, is gets, sorry for the Germans, uh, German words in between. Is it, it's now also a therapeutic implication. Um, 
but linked through medication usage implication tasks with some recommended actions, which is also a task. So give this patient medication A, B, and the, also the current medication, um, which has an influence on which, I, uh, which medication I can recommend additionally to the current medication. Then we have the somatic implication, still the same uh, uh, profile, but we can um, um, insert the, the knowledge or the implications here in as well. So for example, the diagnostic implication, how do the findings indicate the cancer? And for the therapeutic implication, do they imply positive or negative outcome for medication or therapies? Um, how is the medication likely to affect the tumor based on the findings? So these are the two main domains for implications we are currently having. Um, yeah, so this was the introduction. Now we have a look at uh, fire uh, uh, instances with an example oncology report, uh, which is in our case, uh, in the V2, in the virtual tumor board, we are doing a transaction bundle persisted to a server coming from the lab. We're having the patient, the practitioner, the specimen, all included in a bundle. We have the tumor mutational burden observation, which is law encoded as you can see here. Uh, reference to the patient, uh, the interpretation as well. So this is a low mut mutational burden. Um, we have the MSI microsatellite instability, um, law encoded as well. So we try to use law uh, as far as we can, uh, as, as long as there's a proper concept. We already uh, created or asked Loink to create the codes for TMB and MSA as well. Um, and here you can say, uh, can see this is a stable uh, uh, MSI for this patient. Then we have the variant. Um, this is the variant I showed you before. I read 1A. And then we have the whole oncology report which is inside of the transaction bundle. It's a diagnostic report um, containing all the observations I just showed you and referencing all these as results down here. So we have the patient practitioner specimen, TMB, MSI, several variants, several therapy match results from the implications. Um, we have the diagnostic report re referencing each observation and this ends up in quite big fire instances. So probably over 1000 lines of XML or JSON, uh, which could be worse, um, but it's quite an amount, but uh, we haven't faced any problems with that. Uh, so storage is not the problem in 2020, I guess. Um, 1000 uh, lines of XML should be no problem for a proper fire set. I'm now switching to the fire tooling of the Molly Institute where I'm working um, and where I'm also participating in the genomic IG creation. We created specialized tools for the uh, genomic IG. Um, one is called Virtual Tumor Board, Virtuelles Tumor Board in German, uh, which is a virtual tumor board software. Uh, this is the data flow for the software. So you start with a new patient from your EHR, the bad news is in Germany, the uh, hospital information systems normally don't support fire. So therefore we have to start outside of the HIS and this would be for, for example, this, a new patient remote call, adding the most necessary information from of a patient uh, um, into the system or manual data, patient data entry. Or we have in Germany something called RTDG kit, which is, uh, some uh, oncological uh, 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 register data. Um, and this is standardized. Uh, and then we can import this and start with some pre-populated resources. Then we're doing our order entry with the lab, getting back the genomic report directly in fire or in the CSV format we defined with our first partner. Then the report is ready. We have a virtual tumor board meeting, including uh, video and audio conferencing. This will produce a recommendation document, the tumor board recommendation as a fire document. And after the tumor board meeting, there's a further collection of follow-up data and patient reported outcome data. And all this data will then be collected 
And if the uh, patient opts in to donate his data, we'll end up in, in our data pool to support our clinical decision support systems. The genomic reporting viewer um, looks something like this. Um, you can see this is a view which physicians so, uh, practitioners are used to, used to have on their PDFs. And so we, we just try to reproduce it uh, in HTML uh, and uh, uh, enrich it. So you can click on the transcript IDs or the gene to get additional information and so on. Um, we also developed a CDS uh, service for clinicaltrials.gov um, because that's another uh, um, problem. The physician told us we want to uh, get the patients into studies, into currently acquiring studies, not closed studies, which are relevant for the patient and not a million uh, or thousand kilometers away. And, and therefore we created a clinical trial CDS hooks, which automatically from the uh, ICD code of the patient for now uh, and some location information prints out some proposed uh, uh, active studies which the patient can be enrolled to. Then we um, created, uh, in heavily inspired by the uh, uh, Smart and Fire Navigator from uh, um, Boston Children and Harvard. Uh, they created some uh, something similar to this, but uh, some years ago, and it was not updated lately. And we decided to do our own uh, variant viewer, and we ended up with the variant browser. We are calling it. Um, we are querying um, related information on my variant, OncoKB, clinical trials, PubMed, CBO portal, Rectome, Wiki pathways, PharmGKB, including pathway uh, graphics and all. Um, and you can uh, start browsing. With a uh, with a, a gene, and then it will list all most relevant uh, um, um, variants on this gene. Or you can start by just typing in HTTPS string, and then this will be filtered accordingly. If you want to try it out, variant minus browser molit eu. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if I'm too fast. Um, <laughs> We're coming to the tutorial review and closing. I, I reserved some time for, for questions. Um, I showed you the fire genomics motivation and significance, some tooling from the work group. Our IG is the most important tool, some examples of genomic reports, some tooling used by the clinical genomic implementation guide, some tooling. So by the way, all this uh, I just showed you at the Mullet Institute uh, are web components. All of them are open source. Uh, on our GitHub. Um, if you want to learn more about this, because one presentation is very short time to, to get people involved into genomics, especially genomics on fire, um, ask questions on the Sulip stream, join the web calls um, of the genomic group. We're having on Mondays our fire specialized call, on Tuesdays our, our uh, normal group call, which is 99% fire as well. Uh, on, on Thursdays, we have the information modeling call. If you want to learn more about MOLIT uh, clinical decision support and genomics, um, I, I invite you to watch the presentation of my colleague St Stefan Siegler, if you didn't do it. He, it was today at 2.20 and should be uploaded already. I put in the link to it. Um, he's talking about establishing clinical decision support for virtual molecular tumor boards and gives a deeper insight in the tooling or the clinical decision support tooling we are we are we have developed at the Molit Institute. If you want to contact me, um, go into the Huba app, write me email, write me on Twitter, everything is good with me. And that's that's it. That was my presentation. Thank you for participating and I'm happy to answer your questions. Great, uh, Patrick. It was a great presentation. Thanks a lot. Um, so we have one question in the Hoover chat, and that's um, uh, regarding V2. And the question is, is it specific only for oncology, or would it also work for rare diseases or other medical genomic needs? Um, it, it would fit for, for rare diseases as well. Um, Basically, it's a tool for showing variant information in a video conference. So, so probably we, we, need, we would need to make some adjust, adjustments 
regarding the workflow, uh, for example, or some input uh, fields, but in general, I think it should work. Okay, great. So um, I don't see any other questions, but then I would ask one question, maybe something comes in in the meantime. Um, so you're importing the trials from clinicaltrial.gov, uh, suggesting those trials. But to my knowledge, they could be quite um, not up to date regarding the clinical sites participating. So do you have access where you can add information? Maybe you can add on something on that? Yeah, sure, thanks. Um, yeah, clinical trials is a mess, uh, to be honest. Um, information, especially German uh, active enrolling sites are not added. Um, all the data is not really interoperable, so you can't query deep inside to it. So we developed, or Stefan Siegle in person, <laughs> let's call his name, Stefan Siegle developed some pipelines um, querying um, clinical trials regularly, um, transposing it to an intermediate format, and then we have actual persons, experts, uh, reviewing all this information, adding in information, looking manually whether Heidelberg is actively enrolling or not, or is it just a, an error on the clinicaltrials.gov page? Mm. Yeah, it's a mess. Um, in an ideal world, I, I, I'm always dreaming on having one site with interoperable data about enrolling or in general about studies uh, in Germany. I, I know there are several approaches, but that's a problem. There are several approaches. <laughs> and we, we, we opened another one because we, we, we couldn't use the existing ones without any problems. So if anyone on this presentation is interested in collaborating and working towards a centralized study register in Germany, we would be very happy. Yeah, I think that's something maybe I'd be interested in talking to you actually about. <laughs> um, so I don't have any more questions on the list. We've actually got three minutes to go. So anyone who'd like to post, uh, um, send questions, please send them in the session QA on WUVA. Um, in the meantime, I have another question. And I was sort of wondering why you use the task for the recommended action um, and not wouldn't, did you attempt to do something um, different maybe? Um, I mean, wouldn't it be, you would define that in a plan definition, right? Um, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know where this question is going. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this was up to debate as well. Um, I think we ended up with a task resource because it's simple. Um, plan definitions are great. Um, they have, you can transport very complex stuff inside of plan definitions. And that's as well the problem of the plan definition. Um, so therefore, we ended up with simple task resources. At V2, we uh, uh, extend them or we add to the task the, some medication requests for the, medica for the, for the uh, treatment of the patient because 19, for, for a molecular tumor board, uh, the, the recommendations always some medication because they already underwent surgery and, 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 and radiation therapy normally. And we do this by some medication request uh, resources accompanied by the task resource. But you're totally right to, to transport the proper protocol of medication in oncology, you would need more. Um, but um, this is also an HL7 related problem, maybe not, not a problem, but we are genomics, we are not oncology. Um, yeah. But we reached out to oncology and we working closely together a shout out to May Terry, especially um, with, M with the MCODE project, which are doing great stuff for the minimal oncology data set in the US. Uh, and they are all also started uh, participating in our work group and uh, doing a lot of awesome work there. And I can imagine in the future, we will end up together in some proper plan definition or more, more specified way of uh, uh, expressing the, the proposed treatment. Yeah. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, you, you knew exactly where that question was going and you answered it, thanks a lot. Uh, I think we're exactly on the minutes through. Um, if I'm, uh, I don't see any further questions. I see one, for, very fast one. Can you show examples of the software tools that you are used to transform the genomic report data to the file format? That's basically a happy fire client, which will have a, a hands-on session. I don't know the proper name, but uh, with James and myself uh, today. Okay. So I think we're on time, um, right? We are. Thank you. Thank you all. So thanks a lot for this great talk. Very, very dense. Uh, it is. Very informative. <laughs> so have a great, have, have a great, great day. Sorry, day. there's some delay. What? Bye. <laughs> See you. Bye. 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 -bye. Okay.